Hey everyone, thanks for joining me in the dojo today. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, the Fair for Uber Car Program. Now, if you're like me, I got tired of driving my car and uh, I wanted to try something new and different, so I checked out the Fair for Uber Car Program. I used to drive a 2013 Prius, then I used the Fair Program and I got a really clean and spacious Hyundai Elantra with a great stereo system for $195 per week plus taxes. That includes everything, your rideshare insurance, and unlimited miles. And since Fair partners with Uber, you can earn a very strong bonus for a relatively low number of trips and pay for the car. This program is available in California for now, but there are programs all across the country. So check the Fair website for prices in your market. Some drivers are even getting their first week for free. So check it out. Download the Fair app and get a car today. It's a great program. And be sure to use our code, which is RSG100. That's our code, RSG100, so we get credit for sending you there. All right, all right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, all right, Dojo Nation. Um, so here's what I've I've been wanting to do is you know interview drivers, and, and I think it was last week I brought you Paul Pintor, a new driver from uh, from Dallas, Texas, and today I'm bringing you Mr. Robert Bart, who's been driving for four years uh, in the Miami market, and. Uh, Robert had contacted the rideshare guy. He had some questions. He certainly had some opinions about things that were going on down there. And we thought, hey, this would be just another great guy for all of all of the drivers to you know relate to how it is driving in different parts of of the country, and uh, going we're all going through different sorts of uh, situations. So, Mr. Robert Bart, welcome to the dojo. Well, welcome. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> great, great, great. Um, yeah, thanks for doing this. I really do appreciate it. So, um, can you for for my audience? Can you just uh, give us a little background? You know, how long you've been driving? Who do you drive for? What type of car do you drive? Um, and what did you do before you uh, you uh, started doing this? Well, um, I was when I was young. I was a, actually a car car mechanic for a few years. That plays into being able to maintain my own car and saving a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, I was then a, uh, a police officer uh, in Broward County, uh, and I did that for 27 years. Wow. From 2009 wow. through 2014, I was a police sergeant. And um, after 27 years of doing that job, I had had it. And I uh, retired. Mm-hmm. And, uh, my wife was working as a uh, – uh, she was a teacher – uh, uh, a Dade County school teacher for quite a quite a number of years, and she worked for a reading software company. And one day she came home and said she had had it, and we were both without really having jobs and uh, um, three kids, and we were like, okay, we still need to work. We ended up buying a preschool together, so we run a preschool. That's our main source of income. She uh-huh. runs that, and I do some of the background work, um, and. Uh, the thing is that the the job of working as a policeman destroyed my sleep pattern at night. I, I don't see. sleep at night. I, I don't sleep at night, so I end up staying watching TV for a lot, long hours, and it's unproductive. So I said, you know what? I got to go out there and do something. And Uber and Lyft were out there, and I'm like, you know what? I like to drive. I like people. I can handle anything. And I said, let me go for it. I had it- at the time a 2014 Ram 2500 diesel pickup. It was the biggest monster you've ever seen, and I. <laughs> That's what I started with. Yeah. And all I was getting was the, the basic rides, uh, even though the interior was more luxurious than a Cadillac. 
It was just funny picking people up with that big beast. Yeah. And I realized that's not the vehicle that I needed to use. So I ended up uh, wanting to go into the higher end market. And I bought a 2016 uh, uh, Chevy Tahoe LT loaded. It cost me about 60 grand. And um, that's the vehicle that I started with. Great. So, so let me just back up then. So, so you uh, worked as a police officer and your wife worked as a teacher. And you both sort of said, to hell with it. I'm, I, I've had enough of this. And, and then you came together and you came up with this plan to start a school. And uh, was, was part of the plan when you decided to start the school for you to ride share drive? Or was it really you sitting, sitting late at night saying, you know, I could be making some money out there driving? Honestly, I planned on staying 30 years. And what a lot of people that are retired uh, understand that I didn't understand when I was working for somebody else or any, any job, when you're working for somebody else, you don't have, you do have less worries. Um, when I stopped working, you run into a wall and my first year was absolutely miserable. Mm. You're like, if you don't have any plans, I was only, I was 50 years old at the time. I didn't have any plans. And you're, you're literally like, scrambling to do things, you know, and if it, I didn't, really didn't have anything planned, like to go buy a motor home and travel the country. I still have three kids. So, um, the, uh, uh, the notion of just sitting around and doing nothing. And I tried doing different things and hobbies, but I still, there was still desiring me to want to work. When the preschool came along, there was a lot of work at the beginning mm-hmm. and I still spend quite a significant amount of hours there. But the worst part of it was coming home and just, Everybody's sleeping, and I'm wide awake watching Netflix, Amazon Prime, UVerse, and you can only do that for so many hours before you go stir crazy. Me yeah, me. yeah, yeah. I watched a uh, uh, a documentary about Dr. Ruth West Westheimer. I don't know if you remember Dr. Ruth. Oh yeah, um, yeah. She's like 92, 93, and she's yep. like retirement. No, she said I- I'm going to work till the day I die, and she does more work than you and me combined. I mean, it was really remarkable. But I, I do, I do think the retirement myth for many people is a myth that um, there's something in the human spirit that wants to produce, that wants to contribute, and um, and 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 for guys like you, and for certainly for me, um, the idea of just sitting around and playing golf or whatever the fuck you know <laughs> you're going to do is uh, doesn't sound like like something I'll ever do. Yeah, so it's interesting. Yeah. It's, I met a few guys. My father's also a very famous uh, inventor, and I've worked with him on numerous projects, and I've done projects. I did projects back in the 90s with him, and I met a couple of old guys. They were in their 70s, and they were making umbrellas down here, and mm. they told me that the moment you stop working is the moment that you start your death mm. and that you die. Yeah. And I firmly – when I finally retired, I finally understood what those guys meant back in the 90s. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's great. That's great. That's such a positive message, I, I feel. Um, okay, so you've been driving now uh, this big 2016 Chevy Tahoe for the last three to four years. What's What's been the biggest challenge for you um, being a driver in Miami? Miami, I feel, is a other market. Miami, people think of Miami as like this one destination tourist area. Miami covers three counties totaling 4,775 square miles. Miami is in Miami-Dade County, which is the southern end um, and the most probably popular area um, of that area. Just north of that is Broward County, where I live, and that's Fort Lauderdale, for people that don't know, um, for the area. And then above me is Palm Beach County, which is uh, Boca Raton, or also has uh, uh, Mar-a-Lago, which is Mm -hmm. well-known in it. And it's a very uh, the city. Miami itself is uh, as close to as a city as like you can I can get to saying is like New York in driving style. Big buildings. The the roads in Miami are absolutely horrendous for driving um, one ways uh, turns. If you don't know Miami, mm-hmm. uh, even with a GPS, it's very difficult to maneuver. Mm-hmm. Then you get into uh, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale itself is not a huge city. It's a huge area, but the downtown area is uh doesn't have uh the feel of miami or um new york and palm beach is even uh, more spread out it's more rural there's not a lot of buildings clumped together so one of the one of the big issues that i find is distance 
people don't have a tendency just to uh, go from uh, point A to point B, a mile, two miles, which can happen in areas. You can get stuck in an area for an hour and drive, you know, a bunch of little rides. But um, with the Miami, you could be in Fort Lauderdale and now all of a sudden wants you all the way down to South Beach. Mm. Talking a 45 minute drive, um, mm. a long, long drive. So, and, so you, you literally get pings that are like for a fort, like it says 45 minutes to the pickup. You know, it'll tell, no, it'll tell me, it'll tell me, uh, I don't get pings usually more than more with Uber. It stays less than, uh, usually around no more than five to seven minute drives. To oh. Pick something up. oh, that's uh, great. That's good. Lyft, yeah. Lyft will push you as high as, uh, 10 minutes, sometimes higher. And I find with Lyft down here, uh, getting to the passengers is sometimes more, uh, uh, much more longer than with Uber. Yeah, so so Uber so Uber's king down there. So Uber definitely has definitely more demand uh, f- for you as a driver down there. It depends on how you ride. So with um, I know each area has different um, uh, um, uh, tiers. So like Uber has uh, two tiers. They have uh, their economy and then their luxury, and then uh, Lyft uses one down here called economy, uh, extra seats, and then the luxury mm. market. Um, and my issue with driving comes with the shared rides. We have two down here. So, one that's- so let's just go back. So your biggest, okay. so, so you say your biggest challenge as a driver in Miami, then you, 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 is the distance between the major cities, the distance between the major cities and the lower end rides. That's where it comes into play. The the, the low the lower end rides. What are you calling right. the lower end rides? In other words, uh, for uh, Uber, it would be pool. Okay. And for Lyft, it would be shared. Shared. Okay. So you don't like the pool and the shared. It does not work in an SUV. Uh-huh. Um, it does not pay in an SUV because yeah. an SUV runs my car. My vehicle gets about sixteen to seventeen miles a gallon, and on the highway, you might get twenty one if you're not running into a traffic jam. So, but the what people down here have learned, especially with Lyft, is that you can, without with the exception of a uh, rush hour, you can pop a, a shared ride at eleven o'clock at night, take a ride from Fort Lauderdale all the way to Miami, and at the end, I end up paying ten to fifteen bucks for the ride. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a uh, and the the market this uh, has dried up somewhat in the luxury market and the XL market. So I've had to accept the Uber X platform mm-hmm. and take the pool with it. I'll tell you this: in four months, I haven't had one pool hit. Mm. Uh, and uh, to take the uh, the XL market, I mean, excuse me, the Lyft and Uber X market are the largest uh, markets down here. Sure. So I take those now yeah. um, because it does end up being a majority of my uh, compensation. Right, right. <laughs> but with those, it's combined with the shared yeah. and the pool. Yeah. So, so, so are you? Because in the markets where I've worked, um, the the rate we get paid for the shared, and the rate I get paid for regular lift is the same. I mean, we get paid per mile and per minute. So, it doesn't matter how it doesn't matter how many people are in the car. Uh, it's all measured by how long I've drive and, and and what's the distance of the drive, how much time and how much distance. Is it different in Miami where they have a lower rate for the shared and the pool? Yes. If you go into the uh, into the the, the uh, riders app and you look, um, it tells you what the rates are. Uh, so I can I did it uh, I've done it a few times where I well, go check well, out the rate. Well, well, and, well, you don't have to look at the riders. You can just look at the drivers. Um, yeah, I, it, I do. I, how I do it is that. I can sit, I can figure out um, my time getting there, my time uh, uh, showing because I don't really look at all the little teeny numbers. I can tell by doing doing it so many times uh, that a ride down to Miami uh, would say with uh, they have one down here called Comfort now an Uber. It's one above uh, Uber X. Um, I could ride from here to Miami under Uber X and make uh, thirty two dollars for a ride. If taking a shared down there, uh, if I take four people. Um, which I can I put shared and all their luggage, pick them up at the airport, drive out, go back in, pick up another couple of shared because that's what tourists usually do is they pick the first one. And that's another thing I wanted to talk to you about is how they post each company post their uh, rides on the riders app it makes a difference on what they pick. I did one ride like that with shared and this was two pickups luggage all the way to Miami 
and it paid less than the Uber X paid for one solid ride. Hmm. So I spent, you know, maybe would say uh, 45 minutes with uh, the Uber X, but I'm well over an hour with the shared and I'm making a lot less money. So I know I've, I've done it so many times that I was like, they, it's just not worth it for me in my, my vehicle. Okay. I, I'd be curious after, after we do this, I, I'd, I'd like to uh, get some screenshots from you so we could see what, what the rates are uh, for shared versus regular Lyft or for Uber versus, versus pool uh, to, to see what the difference is. Cause I've, I've never, I've never heard of that. So that would be interesting uh, to, to, it, to see. It's very accurate in the sense of that I've done, uh, even with the Lyft, regular Lyft platform, um, I've t- I even complained to Lyft about this. Um, I did a, uh, a it was a, it says 32 minutes, a total time. Mm-hmm. They didn't include, obviously, which they don't include is the driving time to get there, which was 10 minutes. So it was uh, uh, 42 minutes. And my uh, pay, the, the end amount of, that I ended up with was like $5.08. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, it's, it was just, it was just, so I have actually turned off the Lyft um, uh, platform of the, the Lyft and shared platform. And I only take XL Mm -hmm. and up with Lyft. Got it. Got it. And I take all of them with Uber. Yeah. So, okay. So let's say um, if you were in charge, um, (laughs) every driver's dream, um, (laughs) What would you change? Uh, what would be the one thing you would change with Uber, and what would be the one change you would change with Lyft? Well, with uh, Ly- with Uber, um, I'm not. I'm really, f- for the most part, satisfied with everything they've uh, accomplished today. If I had to change something, I would uh, ask them to allow uh, SUV drivers to uh, disconnect uh, pool mm-hmm. from SUVs. Because if when I'm in my luxury vehicle, because it is a luxury vehicle, I dress yeah. with a, I dress with a jacket. Mm-hmm. I have amenities. You're taking that vehicle away from uh, somebody when I'm in the lower end market, away from somebody who's driving around in an economy car, right? And only takes the regular Uber X and below. I'm taking rides away from them, mm-hmm. and yes, I'm giving their riders a better ride, mm-hmm. but I'm losing money, and so are those drivers that are that could be having that ride, right? That, right. that pool ride or that, that shared ride. Okay. Um, what about Lyft? Um, well, Uber, one more thing. They uh-huh. were GPS. Um, and I learned this. I didn't know, but I, I, I speak to all my passengers uh, when they want to talk. Uh, I picked up two tech guys. Miami gets a lot of seminars. Mm-hmm. I picked up two tech guys, and they had a seminar, uh, a convention that they went to. And they both apparently deal with a company that sells Latin long stats to uh, specs to both companies. And they told me that Uber pays more for uh, locating the passenger, like a more accuracy for the passenger. I see. Uh, than actually commuting to the, the actual route getting there, and Lyft pays more for the uh, for the uh, um, the routing versus finding the passenger. Hmm. Now that makes total sense because it's a lot harder to find a Lyft passenger down here than it is an Uber passenger. I can go right with them. So that's one of the things uh, that I with for Uber. Um, I would like to have better routing to get to the customer. And then the ability to turn off pool. Mm-hmm. Lyft is a different is another story. What would you change about Lyft? Okay, now Lyft. Uh, just give me a second here. So I actually wrote this down. I don't want to get it wrong. Um, just your number one thing. Yeah. My my number one thing. Your pet is, peeve. Or, <laughs> my pet peeve is shared. Is they have two levels of shared. One called economy. Uh, it's a it's under economy. It's called shared saver. Hmm. and shared. Hmm. I do not want to take those anymore as an SUV driver. Yeah. It's just, it does not pay at all. It doesn't pay. So it sounds like for both Uber and Lyft, you, you would like to be able to separate the shared from the, you know, the Uber classic. I mean, just regular Uber and regular Lyft. Uh, I see a lot of people complaining about it, like on, on different blogs, on Twitter, that they don't like it, um, I that they don't like it. Well, I can understand if you're in a car that's getting 30 miles a gallon, yeah. you, you could profit from it. You can. Yeah. Uh, in my vehicle, you cannot. Yeah, I can, I can say for me, um, I love it. I love it, especially yeah. because, 
you know, if I get eighty two if I get eighty two rides in a week, you know, I get a hundred dollar bonus. So um, those shared rides add up pretty quick, you know. And um, there's no bonuses uh, down here that I can see of. <laughs> right, right, you're right. And I get paid the same. At least right. in San Francisco, I get paid the same. So it doesn't matter to me. Some some drivers have said, you know, it takes a little bit more work with the shared because you got to find, you know, more passengers and open the door and close the door more often. But it's it, that's never seemed like a whole lot of extra work to me. Uh, but that uh, that's in your that's in your in your area. See, to me in the city, yeah. mm-hmm. I I if I was driving my vehicle, mm-hmm. it might work out differently. Right. Uh, but here, it does not. It does not work at all yeah. for, for me. It doesn't yeah. work. And yeah. I've tried it and I've tried it and it doesn't work. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's great for, uh, you know, for all, for my audience to realize that, you know, mar- different markets are radically different, you know, and, and you're, you're facing things that I don't, you know, that are not issues to me, but they're big issues to you. And I'm, I've got issues here that bother me and they don't necessarily bother you. Um, since so, now you've been doing this for four years, uh, let's go a little more positive here. What 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 do you most like about driving? What's what's your favorite part? Is it well, is it like the? I, pa- it's not honestly. The- lo- yeah, I honestly love driving. I know that you had you, you presented me with a bunch of uh, some questions. Uh, what do I like about most about driving? Yeah, uh, and uh, hang on a second here. Um, I, I, lo- I I mean honestly, with my previous job, I dealt with uh, more often the worst part of society. Right. Uh, which right. fortunately is a very tiny portion, but I got to see that tiny portion and I see, and I dealt with the victims it, um, in this business. You deal with the positive side of, of uh, uh, this country, the nice side. And um, it's like being, it's like reality TV. I don't watch it. You, if you're an Uber or a Lyft driver, you live reality TV. You could either join in in the conversation you be a fly in the wall. Great things happen in that car, um, in the in my in the rides. Um, Miami is absolutely insane with the with the type of people that get into your car. <laughs> and I have some of the best conversations yeah. uh, I've ever had in my life in that in that car. Yeah, it's uh, true. I think I think people, you know, w- when they take an Uber or Lyft, it's it's a special thing. It's, I mean, sure we get people who go to work every day in a car, but you know, especially on the weekends, you get people there, something's going on, they're doing something, they're out and about, they're going someplace, they're going on a trip, they're going to the airport, and uh, they're in kind of an elevated state. And we get to kind of share that energy with them. I agree with you. I think it's, uh, it's very um, stimulating, it's very stimulating. And I find, do you find this, you learn something, I learn a lot uh, from my passengers. Yeah, you do. You, it's uh, one thing, yeah, I've also learned is though I have, you have to be very tolerant as a police officer, you have to be very very tolerant um, as a as a rideshare driver. You have to be very very liberal, and you have to be very very conservative, like a moderate at the same time. Um, you can't be a, a Lyft driver, an Uber driver, and pick and choose who gets into your car. You have to accept everybody that gets into your car, with the exception of somebody who's obviously uh, violent or um, sure. uh, causing some problems. The majority, thank God, are not. Um, but uh, and it teaches if you listen, you can learn a lot about this country and about the world because you pick up not only people from this country, different parts of the country, you pick up people from all over the world. Mm-hmm. I've learned more about different cultures in my car in four years than I've learned in uh, uh, my my previous fifty years of life. In right. Four years, I've learned more than in fifty years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right because we're exposed to everything. Like you said, we we, ought, we have to be very fluid. We're kind of like chameleons, um, and and you got to kind of read who gets in your car, which I think is a great life skill. You know, to be able to kind of read a situation and then respond to it appropriately so that it all turns out very well. You know, it turns out like to be a great experience for the passenger, regardless of what they say or believe or think. Uh, just a side note: uh, Uber introduced with I see it on their comfort rides. Uh, which is like X, uh, which is their Lyft Uber X, but just one above. Yeah. Um, it, it offers you a bigger car or more room. I guess if you're a bigger guy, um, that's what you pick. But I've been getting a lot of those. There's something called preferences. And when the ride comes up and you pick them up, it says preferences. You press it and it tells you what the passenger likes. Cool uh, AC, mm-hmm. no music, uh, hip hop. 
And I had one just real funny story is a guy that I came in and said, likes quiet. Yes. So I got in the car, I turned the radio off, and I didn't say, I said hi, I verified who he was. He got in. We didn't talk for five minutes. There was a 30-minute ride. He chewed my ear off for 25 minutes. Huh. So I was like, he hit, obviously hit the wrong reference. Maybe he wanted <laughs> me, to be, me to be quiet, and he gets to talk. <laughs> right. So he did. It was yeah. entertaining. Yeah, yeah. I wrote a, uh, yeah, I wrote an article about that. Uh, called Shut Up and Drive. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So let's see. Let me let me ask you, I'd be really curious to hear both your, your best ride experience and, and your, your worst ride experience. Because you've done a lot of rides in four years. Do you have, well, like my best ride experience, I got to take uh, a guy named Jimmy Chin to the, to the airport. You know, that was like my best. And, you know, we all have a worst, a worst ride experience. Actually, I'm not interested in your worst ride experience, just your best one. What's one where you really, really remember, wow, I'm so glad I got to, I got to do that. Um, I do have a worse ride run. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Go for it. I'll tell you, then I'll tell you the best one because (laughs) this one was bad. This is, I took, I I have to tell you because it's like, I I mean, I was literally like, okay, too bad that Uber didn't let you carry because I would, (laughs) um, the, I picked up uh, uh, five very, very large muscular guys yeah. uh, at Fort Lauderdale at night. They were all drunk. And I, as soon as I picked them up, they rolled the windows down. And they and we were – and they were screaming obscenities and yelling at women. Oh. And they were saying uh, very sexual uh, – bad, nasty sexual things to them. Yeah. Uh, the worst part of it, besides being that female having to listen to it, is um, the, had, they had their boyfriends or husbands with them. Uh-huh. So they're picking fights with these guys. And I finally said, hey, guys, roll the windows up. No more. And the guy turned around uh, in the front seat. He's big. He goes, I'm paying for this. Fuck you. And he turns back around. He looks back out the window. And the guy in the back seat now calls a guy over. Come on. Come on over to the car. These guys start walking to my car. I then put the car in park, pick up my secondary phone. I said, I'm dying line one. Get out of my car. They were like, are you kidding me? I'm like, out of my car now. Um, and I did, they did get out. Um, I, uh, had, unfortunately had a one star of them and then made the complaint on them. And yeah. I was worried about the next driver. I really was. I was like, who's going to pick these guys up next? It's just going to get worse. That was my worst ride. Now yeah. onto my best one. <laughs> so, so I got to say, that's pretty bad. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's bad. And it, fuck it you. Fuck you. It's my ride. <laughs> it, that's what he said to me. Yeah. And, <laughs> And he's a big guy. Yeah. That was at the point where I'm like, I wanted to say it right back to him. No, fuck you. It's my ride. But I'm like, I don't want to get punched. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, no. Uh, avoid, I don't want to get into a fight. Avoid the you violence. Know, that's not me. I use my mouth as my weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, my best ride came to me unexpectedly. Um, a good Uber or Lyft driver will know their areas very well. Um, we have a, uh, in Broward County, we have a one area. Uh, that's very uh, eld. Uh, I'm never ever pop proper in saying this. These words or or, or uh, letters, but it's LGBTQ community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I know in that area on certain nights, um, it's great to drive in because uh, I get a lot of higher end rides in there. Mm-hmm. And this is right after uh, President Trump was elected, probably around 2017. I went into this area. And again, I, I'm not being insensitive or inappropriate. I just that's the only way I know how to say it. I picked up six black Canadian transvestites, mm-hmm. and we cool. were Fort Lauderdale. Sounds, they were very nice. Fort sounds Lauderdale. like sounds like a great story so far. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going all the way to Miami. Okay. It's a long ride. Uh huh. They've been all been drinking a little bit, and right off the bat, me, I got my hair cut short. I'm wearing a suit. I look like. Uh, um, like, uh, uh, I, I, people tell me that I look like a cop all the time. I'm like, please, I don't want to look like a cop. You do look like a cop. Yeah. I was like, I'm like, I don't want to look like a cop. I don't. And people pick up on it. And I don't know why, but I don't know. Maybe it's from being a cop for 27 years. Yeah. But I just want to hide from it, you know? Mm-hmm. And they went right into what's wrong with President Trump? Mm-hmm. What's wrong with that guy? Now, this is 2017. This mm-hmm. is, you know, right after he was elected. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, here we go. Here you've got the moderate sitting up front in the driving here. And I've got uh, uh, people that don't like Trump all the way in the back and they want to know about it. 
And I'm like, I'm smooth. I'm like, I got into it with him, not in a fight though. Yeah. Into saying that, you know, uh, everything's always a perception. Uh, the, the media in this country is like the National Enquirer, and everybody's entitled to their point of views. That's what I like about uh, America. I like about the United States. And I, and we were laughing, cracking up, uh, very polite. It was very entertaining the whole the way down. I couldn't even breathe. I was laughing so hard for some of the things they were telling me. And That's and great. Yeah. And at the end of the ride, I got a. Uh, uh, they do it was, an, it was like an XL, so mm-hmm. the ride paid pretty well, and then I got a twenty dollar cash tip from it, nice. which to me said, "Thank you." I yeah. mean, that's the way I looked at it. So I thought I was worried, you know, did I say anything to inter? Uh, I, did I was I was actually worried that I said anything to uh, you uh-huh. know hurt their feelings, and obviously I didn't. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and to this day, um, I've had some other very interesting experiences that all drivers have. Yeah, but that one sticks out in my had more than any others it's nice people, it's, it's it's nice when you have a good time and you get paid a little extra money for it too isn't it yeah 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 and that's that's a part of the uh, a world um i i think that there's a lot of i've been in car i've been in i use uber and lyft when i travel and i've been in cars where you're the driver is you're listening to what he wants to listen to right you're uh he doesn't want to talk about certain things he's very opinionated he would tell me that the last batch of people, um, he would never have that group of people in his car again. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, uh, to me, very racist, very, uh, yeah. like yeah. this guy should not be a driver. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, when people say, how, how, how should I get trained to be a driver? I say, go, go out and take five short Uber rides and, and watch, you know, listen and experience five different drivers. And you'll know exactly what works and what doesn't work, you know, as a passenger. Uh, cool. That's great. Great story. Okay, I'm 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 aware of our time here, so I'm going to I'm going to wrap up with uh, three questions. Uh so I've been asking these three questions of of my last uh, I don't know, handful of guests. So, first of the last three, what is your favorite movie of all time? Oh my gosh, my favorite I love sci-fi, I like horror. Um I'm going to say my favorite movie is a lot of people won't even know what it is. Is the Pact? P the P A C T. The Pact. Yeah. Yep. It's uh was on Netflix for a while. They came out with the Pact too. Don't watch it. <laughs> the Pact is about it's a about a uh, a serial killer uh, horror. Uh, yeah. The supernatural, and it had a couple of scenes in there. It's hard to make scare me. That mm. made me jump out of my skin, and it's—I would have to say—it is by far one of my favorite the horror movies. Mm. I like a quality movies. This yeah, movie start real slow. Thriller and, mystery. Yeah, it's got yep. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a sixty-six, so they liked yeah. it. I—I've done. I, you know what? I look at more of the Google reviews now because I'm starting to see like a, a downtrend in for me for Rotten Tomatoes, and I use Rotten Tomatoes, but uh, uh, reviews to me are you know yeah. The majority of people may like it, but the majority of people may be really bad reviewers at the, in that particular movie. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, they liked it. They liked it. Okay, the pact. So that's a new one for Dojo Nation out there. Um, on your phone, you know how on your phone you've got wallpaper. You can pick pictures to be on your wall, the wallpaper of your phone. Um, what yeah. pictures do you have on your wallpaper? I have one. One. Yeah. Um, I used to have. I used to put pictures of my kids, yeah. my family, but I have. So many, then there's so many little coverings over the wallpaper. Um, I was a flight instructor uh, part time while I was working as a cop. I wanted to be an airline pilot, but 9 11 destroyed that. My degree is in aviation, believe it or not. Huh. I have a picture of the Boeing Max 737 cockpit. Wow. Wow. You're a, you're a, a fascinating man, uh, Robert, I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> quite quite an interesting tidbit there. So. You so you're a pilot, so you know how to fly a plane. That's pretty. I haven't cool. flown. In, uh, I haven't flown since uh, 2004. Um, but, well, uh, but it shows a lot of discipline. That's that's not yeah. an easy thing to accomplish. I, I know that. Um, so that's great. Yeah, Fifty thousand right. dollars in licenses down the drain and uh, a degree that uh, only lets me talk to people about aviation. Yeah, but I'm, yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, what what a, what a life experience though. Okay, so um, you walk into the room, right? A whole bunch of people are there. 
What what is your theme song? What is the song that they're playing as you you are walking into the room? Oh my god! Um. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go with. Um, I don't have a song that's actually like like uh, that says what I am, who no. I am. No. But I would think uh, could, of could be the just seventies so- band. Yeah, the Blackbirds walking in rhythm. Now, I have no rhythm. That's for sure. I can't dance. But I love that song, Walking in Rhythm. And I can just picture myself walking in because I love the beat. I don't know if you know the song. Um, There we go. There we go. Thank God you can't see me right now. Oh, yeah. I remember this song. Isn't it awesome? (laughs) Yeah. That's the music I'm walking into. I can't dance, but I can. <laughs> that's what I'm going for. <laughs> I, love it. I love this question. You just, it's just interesting what different people pick. But that's a great song. I love that song. Fantastic. All right. Thinking about my baby. All right. Got to go home. All right. Fantastic. Okay. Robert, it was great talking with you. Thank you for entering the dojo. Is there any final short little thing you want to share with uh, drivers out there across America? Um, I would say don't give up on Uber or Lyft. Uh, don't don't fight them too hard. Keep keep at it. I think that in my own point of view, um, and this might be a, a weird way to look at it, but uh, all new new companies go through growth spurts problems. And I think the rideshare industry has entered uh, puberty and we're growing here and there's going to be some uh, uh, long, there's a road, a bumpy road ahead of us, but I feel that this will eventually uh, iron itself out and everybody will be happy. All right. Um, That's what I'm hanging in there for. And I think that that's what everybody else should hang out there for also. All right. All right. An optimistic uh, way to end the podcast. All right, Robert. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Have a great night. If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? How to Do Online Work You Love from Anywhere in the World. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe, and then every day you're just gonna it's gonna automatically load up, and you're gonna get the next episode, and you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half, and boom, you're done, and uh, it's great. I really enjoy doing that. All right, next episode, more news, interviews, all things rideshare dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.